episode number two for you on this Thursday going into Friday. The Phoenix Suns made a trade on Thursday. They also beat the Utah Jazz. Kevin Durant, a classic performance. Another step toward becoming the best offense in the NBA. And a lot of comments about how Royce O'Neal fits on the Suns. We'll break it all down. Let's go. You are Locked On Suns, your daily Phoenix Suns podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And we're back. This is Locked On Phoenix Suns. We are part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Brendan Clean, a credentialed media member covering the Suns for the past seven seasons, a writer at suns.com, and the host of the Just Basketball Show, wherever you get your podcasts. A big thank you for making Locked On Suns your first listen post-game after a 129-115 Suns win over the Utah Jazz. If you have not already, hit follow or subscribe wherever you're finding us. We are free and available everywhere, including YouTube. When you hit that button, you get a new show in your feed every single Monday through Friday, where you can become an everydayer and get locked onto the Phoenix Suns with the show all season long. 129 to 115, again, is the final score, and we're going to mix things up a little today. Outside of the moment of the game, because the Suns just really led this one wire to wire, We just got to step back and celebrate Kevin Durant. This was one of those nights where it really makes you, honestly for me, and I know there's a lot of you guys listening, it made me realize why Kevin Durant has stands. Uh, Truly. Truly. Because uh, maybe it was also watching the uh, the Kobe Bryant statue stuff pregame and him being on my mind and obviously him having his own generation of uh, of people who really came to love basketball because of Kobe and Durant is just one of those guys and you know I I tweeted a very nerdy thing back when Durant got acquired a year ago where I said uh do you ever just sit back and think about how we get to watch Kevin Durant play basketball all spring I think I might have said and also watch uh, the last season of succession because again I'm a nerd but with Durant that's what it's that's what it's like. It's just <clears throat> he's one of those players, and, and Booker can be like this too, but Durant's more consistent with it for sure. Where this is a perfect example of a game like this, right? Thursday, post trade deadline, one of the best players on the team out, depleted because of the deals you made. It's the Jazz, not exactly the sexiest team, not a bad team, not like tanking where the game's just going to suck, but mediocre. And it's just, there's so many other players in this league, even very good players where you watch cause you love it. You love the team. You love the sport. You, you love rooting for something, but it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. You're not that entertained and you don't really remember it. Kevin Durant in this game made you remember it. He had, I believe, 17, maybe 19 in the first quarter. 29 at half, I believe. Is that right? Maybe 29 at the end of the third quarter. I believe he only made one basket in the fourth. And the dunk on Taylor Hendricks, the crossover into the soaring dunk, his... I mean, look, we talk about the negative body language, and that's gotten a lot of attention this season, and and occasionally by me, but um, I never thought he wanted to get traded or anything. But I'm going to go ahead and highlight the, the positive body language now. Durant was hyped in this game. Beal got hot from deep early. He, when Durant was on the bench during some of that flurry, he was up and pumping his fist, and getting everybody else hyped, and and yelling, and same thing when Eric Gordon hit a transition three in the second quarter, Durant didn't even make it to half court, but the minute Gordon hit the shot, Durant was smacking the ground, and, and getting everybody fired up as well then, there were countless moments like that in this game, and he just gets 
he just gets psyched for this stuff. And the way you know is that in games where he is feeling that energy, he, for media, from a media standpoint, he usually will then speak before Frank Vogel. So if you're not familiar, the coach always speaks first. The players maybe take a shower, cool off, do whatever, and then they'll come out after him. Or before COVID, they didn't come out at all. We went to the locker room after the coach was done speaking. Now they come to the podium. But Durant will do it first. And he did that again tonight. And it's it shouldn't be a surprise. It shouldn't shock anybody why. I mean, this guy... I mean, points-wise... You know, it's as high as as any scoring season he had dating back to his OKC days. You know, 28.3. You know, he was at 30 per game in 2022. Last year, he was technically at 29.1 overall, but as a son, that was down a little bit. The Golden State years and his first season in Brooklyn, he was around 26. He hasn't had a, a scoring season a, a season where he was this healthy is is may, maybe the better way to put what I'm saying. This healthy and this productive and this efficient because the last the, the 30 point per game season in Brooklyn was on 52% shooting. He's shooting 54% from the field right now, 46% from three. That combination of stuff, you really are going back to Oklahoma City, you know, and I've talked about the dunks. He had uh, that one more on Hendricks today. And it's it's infectious. It is, uh, it can't be wasted either. I mean, this guy's 35, and the fact that he's doing this should not be overlooked, cannot be overlooked, cannot be wasted. And so, yeah, you know, the, the fact that the, you know, we'll talk about it at the end of the show, but Frank Vogel, shouted out Matt Ishbia for being willing to add salary today in the at the deadline. You have to, you know. Um when you have a guy rolling like this, it it demands that it's met with investment on the part of the organization, but I would, you know, circle back to round this whole thing out. It is just one of those things that you have to appreciate as a viewer. Like just straight up, it's just entertainment at the end of the day. It is watching somebody at the peak of what they do and kind of perfect that it would come a year after, right? Just a game like this. I'm not saying, like, maybe you will forget this one. Maybe I'll forget this one. But the moment of the game would have to be the the dunk on Hendricks, of course. And I was going to go with that, but that, the game was out of hand already. So I, I thought, you know what? Every night has moments like that. Every night is full of moments like that with this guy. And so starting an all-star game, set up for a good postseason run, doesn't get much better than that. And uh, maybe I'm uh, maybe I'm on my way to becoming a stand now that I did that little essay. Next, last week we checked in on the Suns and whether they were the best offense in the NBA. I still don't think they are, but I said they needed to become a smart offense rather than just an overpowering offense. And tonight was another example of that. We'll break that down next. First, today's show brought to you by eBay Motors, the best place to buy any part you could possibly need. And our partners at eBay Motors this season have teamed up with Locked On Fantasy Basketball host Josh Lloyd to bring you some of the best fantasy picks each week all year. Whether you're prepping for a daily draft or scouting the waiver wire every week, we are going to provide you players that are guaranteed to fit on your roster. So let's see who Josh has picked out in a special trade deadline updated edition of this week's eBay Guaranteed Fit Fantasy Picks of the Week. Taylor Hendricks, who I just mentioned, he's getting playing time. If you're a fantasy person, the minutes, the productivity is great. He did look a little raw today. Asar Thompson, firmly in the rotation with Detroit now that they are resetting a little bit. Marvin Bagley, Similar situation in Washington. Out goes Daniel Gafford, meaning Bagley may well start. Cody Martin, same thing, placing uh, replacing Gordon Hayward. And Benedict Matherin replacing 
Buddy Heald. Much more opportunity all across the league, and those guys are the places to look. Josh Lloyd from Locked On Fantasy Basketball is going to help you win your fantasy championship, and eBay Motors knows a championship team is about each player being a perfect fit. It's the same with your vehicle. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you can make sure your ride stays running smoothly with eBay Motors. Whether it's brake kits, LED headlights, and beyond, eBay Motors has it. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, it's guaranteed to fit your ride the first time every time or your money back. Plus, at these prices, you're burning rubber, not cash. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. eBay Guaranteed Fit only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Keeping the show rolling, let's talk about the offense overall because on top of Durant being just an efficient turbocharged version of himself, the Suns offense fits that same description. All right? 59% from the field. Only got up 29 threes, you know, still, still something to monitor, but 14 of 29, you'll take that for sure. And then most importantly, biggest stat of all, 37 assists co- compared to just 12 turnovers. I mean, that's 3 to 1. That's pretty damn good, but on top of whatever you want to say about the ratio, 37 assists is bonkers. 37 assists on 52 made baskets. Three guys with seven or more assists, including 14 for Grayson Allen, and the whole starting lineup had at least three. I mean, that is all you could ask for. So, again, smart versus overpowering, right? The postseason is about solving your opponent. The postseason is about finding answers for what they're doing to you and adjusting and being able to identify those is obviously the first step. And sometimes that has to happen in game. Doesn't always give you don't always have the benefit of the day between games to craft a new game plan or frankly even halftime. The players have to identify it, right? And so tonight we saw a few versions of that. I thought, number one, and this is not exactly the most uh, undercover thing, but for a lot of each game, the Jazz start John Collins at center, or they play John Collins at center. They had been starting him. Kessler started today for the first time in a long time. And the Suns said, great. Let's put Nurkic in the post and back into you. And... It worked. Of course it worked. That's part of why Nurkic didn't have a lot of assists today. He got to the free throw line five times, only made two, which is not what you would like to see, but he was productive. He he got the job done. He executed. Okay, it's obvious. So what? They got to it quickly. They identified it, and they went, they spammed it, right? They went over and over back to it. So that's one. The other one, which Frank Vogel identified post-game two, is transition scoring. This team, the Suns, had 30 fast break points, and maybe most impressively is only 20 of those were off of turnovers, right? So that means the Suns got, and fast break points is different than transition efficiency, right? Some of that stuff can be graded a little bit different. So the fact that the Suns got 10 fast break points that were not off of turnovers means that they were running off of missed shots. They were running maybe off of made shots at times. And that's great news, right? That shows the level of pace that helps you get those assists up and easy shots and everything else. Some of the Nurkic seals against smaller Jazz defenders were also in transition, just getting into the paint, posting up whoever was there, and getting easy baskets that way. I mentioned the Gordon Corner 3 in transition that that hyped Durant up, all of the above. <clears throat> Again, excuse me, sorry. Again, not reinventing the wheel, not the most sophisticated possible game plan here, but again, sticking to it and finding different ways to exploit it and everybody being committed Sometimes it's as easy as that, right? I mean, you think back to the Denver series last year. 
the two games the Suns were able to win and any of the success they had, period, was largely because they played quickly. Booker was beating the Denver help defense down the court. You know, there was the touchdown pass to Durant. There were countless moments with either or both of them attacking downhill in transition. It Committing to that is a weapon, and so that should not be overlooked either. The other, and there was a few other ones, right, matchup-wise. The who, which Sun star was attacking and who they were attacking was a little bit of a subplot in this one, right? So they had nobody to guard Durant, so that was pretty easy outside of Chris Dunn. So I thought that was kind of interesting, right? At one point when Beal was still in the game, the Jazz moved Dunn to be guarding Durant instead of Beal. But then they both, both Beal and Dunn checked out, which I thought was a little bit of a mistake on the Jazz's part. I know he doesn't play a lot of minutes, but he's kind of the perfect Durant defender, right? Somebody a little smaller who can get under him, but who has quick hands and is strong and has length. I mean, you know, we saw like Bruce Brown do a decent job against Durant at times in the postseason. Dunn is very similar. But when they did that, Durant was able to quickly identify, okay, this is not, this is no longer, I'm hot right now, but that's no longer going to be how we run things. It's just me ISOing or posting up or whatever. So they got off of it and moved things around. Then when he checked out, you know, Durant picked up where he left off. It's going to be those little things. So, you know, every game's different. This team can put up a lot of free throws. There will be nights when they put up a lot of threes. We know they can struggle with turnovers. Obviously, Booker brings a different dimension. The ball and the pace, the ball movement and the pace, look, they're not the same in these games when Booker has been in. So how can he watch games like this and and fit into it? They're getting there. But be on the lookout for how they are cycling between different plans of action, how they are executing the game plan, how they are attacking certain defenders. That is going to be even more valuable in the postseason than their overall talent. We got Durant, Grayson Allen, and Frank Vogel's thoughts on Royce O'Neal now that the trade is official. I'll tell you what they said and what I make of it next. First, today's show brought to you by Nissan. We all know what Nissan's all about. If you're the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further, or you ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner, our friends at Nissan have a lineup of SUVs with the capabilities to take your adventure to the next level. The 2024 Nissan Rogue is perfect for city drives and great escapes, where classic, class-exclusive Google built-in is your always updating assistant to call on for almost anything. Gone are the days of connecting to your phone. Google Assistant, Google Maps, and Google Play Store or are built right into the 12.3-inch HD touchscreen infotainment system, all making the 2024 Rogue the perfect mid-size crossover for your next adventure. In addition, the 2024 Nissan Armada will change what you expect from a full-size SUV. Picture a rugged 4x4 that can seat up to 8 in first-class luxury and style. Tow bigger and explore further in the 2024 Armada. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or that Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Closing out the show. So the Royce O'Neal thing is final. Vogel did not comment on it pregame. It's always goofy to me. The deadline had passed, so either the trade happened or it didn't happen. And either way, it's not going to be tampering or something. Whatever. Doesn't matter. He did comment on it post game. Here's how I would contextualize or summarize what they all said and, and where I'm at with O'Neal after what? Uh, like 10 and a half hours to stew on it. I think it's more of the same. Okay. 
And that might sound negative. I don't mean it to sound negative. More of the same meaning. Is he a game changer on defense? Is he going to be, you know, Marcus Smart or Drew Holiday for this team? No. Defensively, no. Offensively, is he Miles Bridges even? You know, just to use that example, that comparison? No. He's not. He's not even Miles Bridges. But he fits the style of how this team wants to play. Meaning that if you look at the places he's already been, Utah, where... It's funny. We all talk about it with Quinn Snyder. Suns fans got Igor Kokoshkov from that coaching tree a while ago. Their offense is praised, but it's not exactly complicated. A lot of the time it is just drive and kick, drive and kick, drive and kick. Maybe there's some initial action to get into that. Some screen one guy, then set a screen for another guy. And then, you know, the off-ball shooters are rotating in a specific way. But it's pretty simplistic. Brooklyn, even more so. You know, with Kyrie and KD, that team was very isolation heavy. So, O'Neal will be able to slide into the style of offense that this Suns team is playing, which is primarily draw help, move the ball, get open shots. There's a few different ways they do that. You know, pick and roll, isolation, post up. Sometimes just one of their guys, one of their star players crossing half court becomes like a double team and they just move it off that. Playing up tempo, hit ahead passes, transition stuff. It's it's really just hunting those opportunities and playing off of the talent that they have. O'Neal should be able to do that. As both parts of it, right? A shooter when he's open, but also one of the people who can create those opportunities. He is a passer, you know? He is somebody who has averaged three, four assists in this league. And that sounds like not a lot, but I mean, I'm look, I still have Kevin Durant's basketball reference page up. It wasn't until year seven, year six, that Durant averaged four assists a game. That's not a skill set everybody has. So the way that Grayson Allen has thrived here, the way that Eric Gordon has been able to fit in, Even Bull Bull, frankly. It's because they can play that style. So, we'll see what they do on the buyout market. Again, join subtext.com slash Locked On Suns or click the the link in the show description below to join the Locked On Suns insider community. Be in the know about the Suns all the time as the buyout market develops. I would like to see them get a big and maybe another perimeter defender. If they did that, I might feel good. My number one goal with the deadline was to improve the defense. I'm not fully convinced O'Neal's going to do that, but he gives them one more player who can do exactly what this team wants to do. A lot of other teams around the NBA would give up a lot to have that. You know, the Bucks didn't really get to make that move. We'll see if Patrick Beverly ultimately makes a dent in their upside. But, you know, Milwaukee's a perfect example. Golden State, the Lakers. There weren't moves out there for them. They could have gotten Royce O'Neal. You know, I'm not trying to say that. But upgrading at a spot you need with a player who fits... That's the whole name of the game, even if it's not a game changer. And the familiarity doesn't hurt either. Both Grayson, very early on, and KD have played with him. 
You know, I think that helps. I really do. I'm sure Eric Gordon has some familiarity from their battles against one another. So, I think it'll be a nice, solid fit that does make an impact. And that seemed to be the consensus. Allen said, you know, move the ball, make threes, play defense. Durant said effectively the same thing. The ball movement was a big part of it. He said he's a good teammate. He shouldn't have any problems fitting in here. Vogel said, Vogel pointed out a lot of the stuff I was saying about the Jazz, you know, and said he's going to be a defensive piece much more than he's going to be somebody who adjusts our whole game plan. Sometimes that's all you need. That'll wrap us up for show number two here on this Thursday night. Enjoy your Friday. Enjoy the weekend. If there is anything huge from Suns Warriors, I may do a bonus show Saturday night or Sunday morning. Also, may just try to take some time to myself. (laughs) Either way, keep up with all of it on joinsubtext.com slash Locked On Suns. Join the Locked On Suns Insider community. Be in the know about the Suns all the time. Over there, straight to your phone. Text alerts on all of it. Follow and subscribe to this show if you don't already. And I will talk to you guys soon.